Is jihad a defensive war for Muslims or is it a war against non-Muslims? In the Quran, jihad means to strive, which involves war as well. But for actual war, the words used in the Quran are kital and harp. So, a person studying war or jihad in Islam must take into consideration all the verses of the Quran related to the terms jihad, qital and harp altogether. If we take the Quran as a whole, it is clear that the Muslims cannot go to war unless they are attacked first. Two verses I will quote will clarify this misunderstanding. Chapter 22, verse 39. To those against whom war is made, permission is given because they are wronged. Chapter 2, verse 194. So, if you are oppressed, oppress those who oppress you to the same degree and Fear God and know that God is with those who are pious and follow the right path. So the Quran gives permission to fight only against aggression. Yet some jurists hold that just being non-Muslim is a sufficient reason to be declared war and they try to justify this with chapter 9 verse 5. But when these months prohibited for fighting are over, slay the idolaters wheresoever you find them and take them captive or besiege them and lie in wait for them at every likely place. But if you continue reading the same chapter further, you will see that this particular verse is about non-Muslims who have attacked Muslims. The aggressor side being non-Muslim is not the issue here, but the attackers are. In this particular event, since it is the non-Muslims who have violated the treaty and attacked, a defensive war is permitted for the Muslims against the aggressors. Their being idolaters is irrelevant. Now, let's look at the first verse of this surah, chapter 9, verse 1. Immunity is granted those idolaters by God and his apostle with whom you have a treaty. As can be seen, at first, immunity is granted to idolaters despite their beliefs. See, just being an idolater is not a cause of war according to the Quran. But when read further, it is understood that it is the idolaters who attack the Muslims first and that aggression is the cause of war. Chapter 9 verse 12 and 13 say, But if they violate their oaths after their covenant and attack you for your faith, fight the chiefs of unfaith. For their oaths are nothing to them, that they may be restrained. Will you not fight people who have violated their oaths? Plotted to expel the messenger and attacked you first. Do you fear them? Nay, it is God whom you should more justly fear, if you believe. So, only by removing the verse from its whole context can these jurists hold that being a non-Muslim is a sufficient reason of war. A coherent hermeneutic approach to the Quran requires understanding the Quran as a whole. In short, what I mean is individual verses have to be evaluated along with their prior and following verses, Siak and Sibak, and with other related verses. Only with this method can we understand the provisions of the Quran correctly. Otherwise, it is inevitable to misunderstand the meaning of the verses. In addition to misunderstanding the meaning of the verses, the claims that some verses of the Quran abrogate some other verses and hadiths can surpass the authority of the Quran is also worth to mention here for our discussion. First of all, as Muhammad Asad states, the abrogation claims has no Quranic basis and there is not a single reliable hadith which supports this idea. In order to claim that there is abrogation between the Quranic verses, we must have some verses contradicting each other. But as the Quran says, there is no contradiction in the Quran. Chapter 4 verse 82 says, Do they not consider the Quran, had it been from other than God, they would surely have found therein much contradiction. With this so-called abrogation method, they were able to declare some verses invalid when the verses contradicted the ideas they wanted to prevail. As I mentioned many times, there are also many fabricated hadiths even in the most 
reliable hadith books which are believed to abrogate the verses of the Quran. Muslim politicians needed to unite people for near conquests. They used the rhetoric of jihad and jihad against the infidels for their political purposes. This rhetoric was used not only against non-Muslims, but also against Muslims who were declared infidel by other Muslims. So, even though the Quran does not approve being aggressive against other belief systems, Muslim jurists, either by misinterpreting or abrogating the verses of the Quran or by fabricated hadiths, have managed to present Islam as being in perpetual war with other belief systems. The formation of the militaristic rhetoric of jihad then is mainly the result of developing political issues. The abrogation claims and the fabricated hadiths have played a very important role in the loss of jihad's Quranic meaning of a defensive war by justifying war against all non-Muslims. They defend perpetual war.